In the last video, we used DF, and we were able to see the primary hard drive, but we were not able to see the hard drive that we had created and added to the system. So how do we know what that's called? I'm going to run dmessage here, and because the first hard drive was dev sda, I'm going to grep for sdb using dmessage. Now we're going to see something a little more here because I've run through this process once and my dmessage is a little bit um, ahead right now. And so ignore all of this. Here's what you should probably see just at this point is you'll see these four lines. If you have SDB, if not, it's probably called something else. We can see we have a 21.6 gigabyte hard drive here. And essentially, it looks like this. It's a raw disk. It's unpartitioned. It's 21 gigabytes. We just have a random series of data on here. And uh, we wouldn't be able to place files or do any kind of logical organization because we don't have any of the things that a computer needs in order to do things like organize files and folders. Well, we're going to go ahead and add that. There are a couple of programs we can use. Go ahead and do an apt install gparted. Pause the video and let that run. So gparted is a pretty handy program that I use for disk partitioning a lot. I find it's very helpful. You can run this as root. And up in the top right corner, it's going to give you a list of all of the different devices that are available for, for partitioning. If you put a USB drive in, it'll show the USB drive here. Now, it's important to note that gparted will not make any changes until you tell it to, until you click right. So if we go in here and we mess with stuff until we confirm that we want to change it, we're safe. But once we confirm we change it, if we delete a partition or create a new partition, uh, if there's important data on that disk, that important data could very well be lost. So here's SDB. Um, and SDB, again, 20 gigabytes. Unallocated, free space, a lot like that graphic I just showed you. It's pretty easy to create partitions over here and use this tool to do what we're about to do with another uh, with a command line tool. But go ahead and close that out. So we're going to use CF disk. There's another one you can use. Okay, so CF disk is one that I like. I find it's a little bit easier. You will always have access to F disk, which will allow you to select where you want your partitions to be on the disk as well. We may do F disk later on. So I'm going to do CF disk and we're going to point it at dev sdb. Now the first question you're going to see because I've already done some work with this drive is uh, it's going to ask you what type of partition you want. Choose GPT and you can see I've already labeled this GPT. Let's talk about what that means. Uh, the first time you open up a disk you will see that. And so two of the most common partitioning standards are the MVR standard. Now this is older. It uses 32-bit uh, addressing, so it's only capable of recognizing a 2 terabyte hard drive. You know, even 10 years ago, 2 terabytes was something that uh, most people didn't have that much, right? Um, so if you were to purchase a 6 terabyte hard drive and you were to go into Windows and choose MBR, for example, when you partition, uh, it would only recognize two terabytes and you would only see two of the six terabytes. So GPT overcomes that. That's one of the major benefits of it. It has a theoretical maximum of this many terabytes. And I don't know about you, but I have not seen a hard drive or even an array of hard drives now that I think about it that is that large. So GPD, uh, GPT is definitely the way to go. Uh, go ahead and get that in your notes if you're in my class, please. So we've got this free space. Uh, let's go ahead and partition it. We can see it starts at um, byte 2048 and it ends at 4213598. We're going to create a new partition. So I'll use the arrow keys, choose new. Let's make this a 10 gigabyte partition. Let's make it half the disk. Let's not partition the entire disk. And we can do this on a physical computer to create, for example, a dual boot operating system. 
where one partition has Linux, the other partition has Windows, and when you boot up, you can choose which operating system you want. We may just do that with uh, VirtualBox. That may be a good that may be a good set of labs. So here's uh, 10 point zero gigabytes. I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to go ahead and partition that out. We can see it defaults to uh, it's going to recognize it as being a uh, it's going to want a Linux file system on there. But we do have different types that we can choose from. And uh, in this case, we could choose, for example, swap virtual memory. Um, Swap space is not required to run Linux, but if you run out of uh, actual physical memory, it'll start to swap out the memory to the disk, so it's good to have swap space. Anyway, it defaulted to Linux file system in this case. And we can see that it starts at 2048 and it ends at 209.75367. We have a bit at the beginning that is reserved for the actual partition table uh, for the entire block device. And then the first partition then, SDB, you can see it was given that identifier one, will start here at 2048. And we'll take a look at what that looks like um, graphically here in a second. Let's go ahead and write this to disk. So I'm gonna choose write. And are you sure? Why, yes I am. You have to type the whole word, Y-E-S. And I can just hit Q to quit, or I can scroll over to, qu to quit. So let's take a look at what we have on disk here. So our disk looks like this, kind of. We do not have a file system table yet. We're going to create that file system table at the beginning of our partition that will allow uh, the computer to know where files are located in this jumble of zeros and ones here but we don't have this yet. We haven't, we haven't done this part. Uh, we have a partition table though at the very beginning of the disk. And that partition table can contain up to, uh, I'd have to look that up, it's not super important for this class, how many, but um, it's basically just like a database, okay? And some of the key information that it's got is, okay, partition one is gonna start at 2048, and partition one is going to end at 209.73567. I think that's the number we saw in CF disk. And so we've got this partition table here. And therefore, when the computer reads this, it's going to think, okay, I will find the first zero for partition one at byte 2048, which is right here. So we could have things like a master boot record. Um, we're definitely, and the file system as well, are going to be contained at the beginning of this partition. And then it will know that the end of the partition is here. So the start of that unallocated space would be at 209 in this example, 736, the next number up is 8. And so we've got all this partition space, which goes to the end of the disk. And we'll probably create a second partition just to prove it. Um, and once we do that, then this partition table would contain two entries. It'll contain a partition to start and a partition to end. Right now it doesn't. Again, we do not have a file system table built into our partition yet. We just have the partition table, which tells the computer where it starts and where it ends. We'll do that uh, file system table in the next video. So let's do one more thing. Uh, inside of this, if I go to G parted, let's just open that up one more time. And if we kick it over to SDB, we're going to see that essential, uh, we're gonna see essentially what I was talking about. Uh, we can, it, it is recognizing now, is able to read the partition table at the beginning of that disk. And it knows the dev SDB one is 10 gigabytes and we have an unallocated 10 gigabytes as well. Okay, in the next uh, video, we'll go ahead and we'll create a file system and we'll start using it and we will make it persistent on this system.